We dedicate this week's show to the family and friends of Malcolm Graham. Welcome to another edition of Mainly Motorsports. I'm your host, Steve Perry, flying solo here today. Uh, got a lot, of, a lot of valuable information for the racers and the, the motorists, uh, the guys with the motors and stuff. So I wanted to spend a lot of time with R.J. Melton and uh, Spencer Robbins over at Butler McMaster. And uh, during this week's episode of Mainly Motorsports, talking about some of the changes that are taking place over there, talking about the history of, of the business and the organization and where Dave McMaster and Marty Butler started with, the vision they had, where they are, and uh, where RJ and his, his family-owned organization based out of New Jersey plan to take it, both uh, in-house and you know, on the web, so to speak. So I uh, figured there was a lot of stuff there that we wanted to cover. So you know, we'll fly solo today, talk about some of the small things that went on over the last couple weeks and coming up in the last couple weeks. And, you know, I traveled for, and I don't even know how many, the umpteenth time, I'll call it that, whatever the umpteenth time is, uh, this past weekend over the Thompson International Speedway for the Thompson Flea Market. Donald Honig started it years ago. I don't even know. Me and Louie went down. We go every year. We try to figure out how many years we've been going. Couldn't figure it out, but it don't matter. We go. We have a good time. And that's, you know, I mean, you try to sell some stuff, and, you know, it works. We've sold some big stuff down there, and, uh, you know, we've sold some little stuff. It's one of those things and you know, helps a guy, uh, you know, take down his inventory, put some money towards maybe buying some new stuff for the next year or trying to, trying to get rid of and maybe move up in a division uh, for the next year. So uh, we had a great time. Always see a lot of great friends down there. I got some friends from Canada, Canada, Canada that I met uh, years ago, sold them a lot of parts and uh, got to spend some time with them. Great people. Chris, uh, Chris David, I um, can't even think of his name now, but Chris. Chris and his whole family. And uh, Matt, and, and I call him the old man, never even knew what his name was, but he calls me the kid, I call him the old man. But uh, really, really have a good time with those guys. And, you know, the Hennessys, Bubba Pelton, you know, Bobby Cabral, Louis Mechelitis, a lot of people, uh, we always get in the same area every year on the backstretch at Thompson and just have a great time. You know, it really makes the weekend go by, you know. And a uh, little shout out to Danny Bubar and his gang is me and Jake Dorr, our first, uh, first business partnership, we decided we'd buy a pass mod and try to uh, pedal it off. And uh, that's what we did over there, Sad. He bought a pass mod and, you know, kind of do some little work to it and spruce it up a little bit and make somebody a heck of a deal. So uh, hasn't really raced since 2010. Distance racing, Jeff Taylor put some updates into it. And, you know, it's your chance to go past mod racing. I mean, we got a price on it of 4000 best offer. You got a seat, go find a 602 crate, and you can be racing on the Pro All Star Series, some of the biggest events throughout New England, along with the Super Late models. So, uh, any questions you got, contact me through text messaging, email, uh, Facebook. And just like if you're looking for a legend car, I got one of them for sale too, 7500 or best offer. So, I think we just created our own segment of classified. So, if you have something you want to sell, maybe that's something we start doing every week. Take a segment during the off season, try to help people get the word out because. You know, you can only tell, and, you know, obviously we've got Facebook, social media, and, you know, there are ways now that we didn't have years ago to get that information out, but maybe that's something we need to look at here with Mainly Motorsports. But, you know, like I said, Thompson was a great time over there, and a lot of people, Saturday was beautiful, Sunday was a little cold, and see a lot of old faces, familiar faces, friends, and, you know, so that's Mayberry's Flea Market two weeks ago, good turnout, vendors, buyers, sellers, uh, and then... This past weekend, Thompson. I don't know. I'm going to guess 1,200 vendors. Now, this coming week over at Lee, you won't see 1,200 vendors. You might see 150 vendors. But if you're looking for race stuff, Lee is the flea market because 90% of the people coming to sell will be selling racing pots. You know, whereas Thompson, I want to say 30% are selling racing pots. But other than the past mod, all I bought was an apple tree picker, or so they tell me, um, a blow-up Christmas tree, and a coat rack. So I bought stuff that isn't even racing related down to Lee, so, I mean, not uh, Thompson. So it was a great time and, you know, a good time had by all. And you can go down to Lee this week, Saturday and Sunday. It's five dollars to get in, walk around. doesn't take you all day, so it doesn't, doesn't kill your day because I know banquet season's coming up. And, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of people get their banquets. I think Stars is this week. I think uh, Speedway 95s is this week. So 
Uh, it's that, that time of year to enjoy your banquet. And, and uh, we just had the Nelka banquet this past weekend. And, you know, congratulate all the, all the people that got awards and were nominated for awards and, you know, the new officials coming in. And, you know, I had a great time and, you know, really enjoyed, get, get to catch up with, uh, with young John Peters over there. And, you know, you always look at those drivers that come in each year and maybe take that next step to that next class and really excel. And usually you don't see that big acceleration. Sometimes you do, but usually you don't. And, you know, John Peters came to the Legends, didn't know what to expect, you know, off a Thursday Thunder Championship, only 16 years old but probably had a more dominating year than the champions. Won seven races, you know, hadn't been for a couple of engine failures uh, during the beginning of the year and the end of the year. Uh, he might have been the Nelka champion and the Thursday Thunder champion as a rookie. So uh, John's pretty excited for 2014. They have no plans in place, but he sold off all his legend equipment this past weekend. So now he's got a little bit of money, not enough to just go pro series racing at Beach Ridge, but that's what he's got for set for a goal and that's what his dream is. So. Uh, if he's able to pull that off, and we're going to have him in the studio over the next couple of weeks and hear what his plans are and see if he's any closer to that. But uh, I'll tell you, the rich keep getting richer. If, if Andy Cusack brings John Peters into the fold with some of the other young drivers that are coming there, and then, you know, the guy, Jake Doerr, coming over from Star as a modified champion, you know, hearing Scuttlebuck that a couple that went past racing last year are coming back, and, you know, there's still a couple other guys that want to go that route. So that's going to be one tough group right there. So... Stay tuned here on Mainly Motorsports throughout the offseason, and we'll bring you up to date on who's doing what, where, and when, and how. So we're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll hear from R.J. Melton as he sits in with us and talks about the vision that they have for Butler McMaster and why they ended up acquiring Butler McMaster and what was so uh, appealing to them. So we're going to take a break, and we'll be right back on Mainly Motorsports. Hi, I'm Scott from Scott's Recreation. We're ready with over a million dollars in snowmobile trailers, from clamshells to five-place enclosed. Enclosed trailers starting at $19.99 in a variety of brands. Nobody has a better selection or better prices. We also offer a great selection of aluminum horse trailers made right here in Maine. And our showrooms are full of snow gear, all at discounted prices. See it all in person or online. Scott's Recreation, Route 4 Turner and Route 202 Manchester, Maine. Don't let the other guys rough you up. Shop online at otmotorsales.com. Clark's East Side Scrap and West Side Scrap, two of the region's most efficient scrap yards. Both locations have the latest and greatest equipment, along with large capacity scales that are constantly calibrated to ensure honest weights. Car crushing, roll off containers, scrap metal. Clark's East Side Scrap in Chelsea and Clark's West Side Scrap in Farmingdale. Don't fix it, scrap it. Mainly Motorsports TV, brought to you by Moody's Collision Centers, now with seven convenient locations. Gorham, Scarborough, Biddeford, Portland, Sanford, Lewiston, and now South Portland. Visit us at moodyscollision.com. Southern Maine Motors, out to be Maine's number one Chrysler Dodge Jeep dealership, Route 1 Saco. Welcome back to Mainly Motorsports, and uh, we've got a special guest in here. I'm not even going to tell you what his official title is, because you'd be, <laughs> you'd be sitting here, and I'd be sitting there. But I uh, want, to, want to welcome R.J. Melton to the set of Mainly Motorsports. How you doing, Steve? Now, R.J. is uh, pretty heavily involved in Melton's, which is out of New Jersey, right? Yep. That's where the home base is? Yeah, yep. but that's our headquarters, I guess you could headquarters, say. Headquarters, but... Yep. Uh, when it comes to Maine and New England and motorsports and just general automotive uh, engines, and uh, it's Butler McMaster now. You guys have taken over Butler McMaster, and uh, you know nothing's changed, so to speak, as far as what you do. It's just you're trying to bring awareness of other things and 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 kind of take it to a new level, is what I call it. Um, yeah, I guess. I mean, in regards to that, I guess what a lot of people ask is how we came about to to be involved with Butler and how we really got you know into the into the motorsports scene and well i mean i mean we uh, have a very high quality rating um for our products that we had down in new jersey and um at one point we got very very busy um 
and we found Butler McMaster, and they were the only facility with the same high quality uh, products that are being put out without question, and their craftsmanship, and their and their machinists, and their skill levels. Well, um, we took that um, and we used that in our products, and never had a problem with it, never questioned it. It was it was the best, and we had gone to plenty of other shops, um, and then we had developed a good relationship with with Butler uh, throughout the years uh, in that regards. Um, so when the when the previous owner came to us with the opportunity, said, hey guys, I want to get out. Um, you know, I've been doing this uh, my whole life, um, and it's time for me to retire. Uh, you know, we jumped all over it because we knew that nowhere else, uh, you know, on the eastern seaboard, let alone New England, are you going to find craftsmanship and people with that amount of skill set um, in that business. So, uh, and it kind of went perfect along with uh, what we had been doing. I had been in the pits my whole life. You know, we were racing dirt track every single weekend. My father raced at a local track, New Egypt Speedway. Um, so, I mean, it just went along with, with everything that we were involved in and what we were doing. Um, so that's how we got, you know, involved uh, with Butler McMaster. Um, and then, yeah, just uh, every, all the machinists, all the techs, um, our same, uh, our same work base, clients, um, pretty much everything staying status quo. Um, Which is good because sometimes when there is change, people get nervous. You know, they, they've become accustomed to dealing with, uh, you know, the people. You know, Spencer yeah. behind the desk or behind the counter. You know, Dave. You know, so you get nervous when, you know, now who am I going to deal with? Is the customer service I've become accustomed to still going to be there, you know? Precisely, precisely. And that was, that was one of the things that, you know, we wanted to make sure 100% stayed intact. And that was also one of, you know, one of Dave's. Uh, main fears was that his employees um, and, and, and the guys that he had worked with and trained and, and, and everything like that were going to stay employed and, and, and that we were going to take care of them. Um, and we have, and I mean, it's the same staff that's been there. It's the same product that's being put out. Um, and we take great pride in that. Yeah, I mean, you know, which brings me to, you know, when you make a change, you know, Dave looked out for his employees because obviously you're buying a business, but you need to make money. Exactly. So, you know, some people come in, they think we are overstaffed, we cut 20%, 25%, now we're going to make money. You guys didn't do that. You took on the staff that was there, mm -hmm. and but you're now taking the business and you want to expand it that way. You want to you want to make your money by expanding the business, you know, so which will possibly open up some more job opportunities, but, you know, between the Internet, being very heavily involved in the Internet and, and you know, the website and, you know, kind of doing more than just putting a website together. Exactly. Um, I mean, to go back to your point that, you know, we take care of the guys, you know, our fa our business is a family-owned business. You know, uh, my great-great-grandfather started a business. We've been in business since 49. Uh, right now, there's over 10 of my family members working in our business. And, you know, to just do like what you just said, to come in and have 20% cutbacks because someone's overstaffed, you know, that just doesn't fly by us. We take it upon, you know, ourselves to make sure that we're taking the right steps so that every one of those guys can, you know, uh, have, feed their families, um, you know. And and by broadening our business range, um, you know, we recently enhanced our relationship with Ford Motorsports. Um, we took it to the next level. Now we are we are retailing all of their products online um, at the same competitive rates that everybody else in the industry is retailing them for. Um, so, I mean, everybody in New England has access to them. Uh, drop ship right from Ford. Everything at the drop of a hat. Um, same thing that you would buy from anybody else, but you're buying it from a local company. Yeah, no, so that's, that's good. So the website is, you know, every day there seems to be new stuff happening with it. And, you yep. know, it's, it's, it's just, you know, everybody wants to sit at home and do everything now. <laughs> and, you know, so it just makes it easier for them. And, you know, and then to reach... You know, now you've gone beyond Maine. You know, we were talking before, you know, you just sold a couple engines to people in out of New England, you know? Yep, we just got some sales uh, from some guys in Pennsylvania. They wanted to drop some, some uh, Ford Crate engines in their hot rods and, and drive down the road with them. Um, I mean, as far as the website, I mean, it's very exciting. We have uh, a ton of our vendors that we are yet to get on our, get on our, uh, get on our website and, uh, I mean, it's going to be comparable to, to like a Jags or Summit. Um, you know, it's, it's going to be big. 
Um, and what we want to do is we want to we want to help develop our relationship with our customers as much as possible, and and you know offer everything to them at the price at the best prices that we can, you know, um, and that's going to help us achieve all that. But at the end, you can still pick the phone up and call, right? Oh yeah, yeah. That, I mean that's that's what we want. We want people to call. We want to talk to people. You know, customer service and and being there and helping helping our customers and. And, um, and talking to them really is, is, you know, the main job of many of our guys. You know, and then, you know, the name Butler McMaster is synonymous with racing up here. I mean, Dave McMaster, we had a, uh, you know, a huge deal last year at the Northeast Motorsports Expo yep. where 25 racers, people involved in the sport over the last 25 years were recognized by the fans and the media of their accomplishments, and Dave McMaster was one of those 25. So that right there in itself tells you what he's meant to the sport of motorsports. So, you know, there is such a huge following, and, you know, so you got a lot of living up to do there, you know? I mean, <laughs> you're not going to come in here and make people forget about Dave McMaster, you know? But, but to still have his name there and have him involved and, and be a part of it still, I mean, that's going to be a big deal for you. No, it was, it was huge. Um, I mean, we had Dave... Dave continued to work for us for a year and a half. Um, and just like you said, he was Butler McMaster. Um, so what we wanted to do is we wanted to make sure that everybody, uh, every single one of our techs, every, one, every single one of our machinists knew as much as they could. And, 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 and pretty much every single person that we have working there um, has been trained by Dave and, and, and knew everything, uh, you know, not everything, but... Yeah. But most of, of what Dave knew, um, and some of our guys, uh, you know, I would I would uh, say, can are ready to take Dave's uh, position, and and uh, they've actually proven to me over the last couple months um, since Dave has been there that that they have the capabilities by by all means they are 100% capable of handling everything, and I would say that our quality right now of our products is you know, just as good, if not better, uh, than it was before because we, we have some more resources now to work with. Yeah, and, and one of the things, and you touched on it earlier, and I just want to talk about, when you walk into a business, it's the familiarity. You know, when you, geez, I've been coming here five years, and a lot, there's not a lot of changeover. So, you know, that means, A, they're doing a good job. B, they like the job that they were doing. So it's just everybody, and you, you, you know, it's still business, but you feel like part of a family. The customer now also feels part of the family. Yeah, and we try and we try and create that as much as we can. Um, you know, we, we try and and um, and accommodate people in, in the best manner that we know how. Uh, and, and it all goes back to customer service and, and being the best that we can be in that regards. Now, um, the website. You know, if you've seen seen the benefits of that already up here in northern New England, and you know when with what you're trying to do? Um, well, not so much uh, in the northern uh, New England area, but, I mean, we are seeing, it's been about three months now we've had this project going on to really uh, enhance our website and enhance our, our online appearance uh, and really give a, a real easy user experience, a real good user experience on our website and, and just a, this is what I want, I click it, and I buy it. Yeah. Um, you know, that's what people want. That's what I want when I'm buying stuff. So um, we finally got a good product. We, we've got a good uh, platform that we, that, we, uh, that we can work with. And um, like I said, we're, we're getting ready to really take full advantage of that. Oh, well, that's good. But uh, we're here with R.J. Melton talking about Butler McMaster, their acquisition of Butler McMaster, you know, over the last couple of years. And we've got some more things we're going to talk to. But we're going to take a break right now, and we'll be right back with R.J. Welcome to Mainly Motorsports. To order copies of a show, send a check or money order for $15, shipping and handling included, to Mainly Motorsports, 326 Roosevelt Trail, Wyndham, Maine, 04062. And please add a description of the show. 
Award Champs LLC is Southern Maine's premier award supplier and official award supplier for many of the area's top organization and events. If you're in need of an award for a sponsor, employee recognition, fundraising event, or an entire sports organization, call Todd Mead at Award Champ. They provide the best for less with competitive pricing like the big online firms, but give you the personalized service you can only get from a local supplier. When you're in need of awards or personalized gifts, call Award Champs, where they'll help you reward your champion. Hatman's Redemption and Agency Liquor Store is located at 95 Tanberg Trail in Wyndham, Maine. With over 400 feet of hard liquor and 15 doors of ice cold beer and soda, Patman's can handle all of your beverage needs. And if it's wine on your agenda, we have over 300 varieties in stock. Then when the party's over, Patman's can handle all of your main returnables, and we welcome all bottle drives. And if you're late for the race, drop off the bottles and pick up the cash at your convenience. Hey, this is Patman himself. Just letting you know that Patman's is your one-stop shop for all your thirsty needs. Now you mentioned uh, earlier in the last segment about the dirt side of things and how you and your family, that's where you came from. Yeah. So now, for Butler McMaster, they probably haven't done a lot of dirt engine work over the last 10, 15, 20 years. Right. That's something you're hoping to bring to the table. Yes, that, uh, that's precisely like, that's, that's uh, our new market that we're really trying to go after. Um, is is the is the big blocks in the 358 modifieds and in the 410 sprints uh and the 358 sprints um like I, like you said i came from from the dirt tracks i was there every every week um i was working on my pop's car every single night since i could throw a hammer you know um so that's something that i that i really see a, a potential for us to build our business into and and um you know, I, I see it as a good avenue for us to take advantage of. Yeah, and you know, it's it's anytime you can expand the company and expand the business. You know, and um, there's not a lot of dirt up here in New England, but there is enough that if you get all it takes is get that right one or two. And yep. you know, and I always thought of us as racers as being that salesperson that you have that you don't have to pay. They actually pay you because if they stand in victory lane or they run up front and people see your name on their car and know that you're involved in them, they're going to sell you a product. Yeah. You know, plain and simple. Yep, exactly. Um, I mean, yeah, if, if somebody wins and they have your product in their car, they want it. That's just, that's, yeah. that's, a, that's a driver's mentality. Yeah, it, ain't, um, it don't matter that uh, <laughs> that guy can drive and you can't. It's, you know what, that motor beat my motor. You yep. know, it's... It's never a racer's fault, and anything that happens, it's never their fault. It's always, uh, I don't want to say that. <laughs> well, I'll say it. I'll say it. It's always the engine's fault, the tire guy's fault, the tranny's fault, somebody's fault, but it ain't the driver's fault, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. So, no, it's, uh, it's good. And, you know, the website, and it, it just it brings another, another um, avenue for you to expand your business. And, you know, what's the, how does somebody find your website? What's the, the address? Uh, it's www.butler-mcmaster.com. Yeah, and it's anything you need as, as well as information, location of, and I will say this, the first time I ever went to Butler McMaster, yep. drove by four or five times before I found it. <laughs> Sits up on the hill, yep. right? Yep. It's well, a, we, got a, we got a nice, uh, neat new sign out front. Was there used to be trees there? Yes. Yeah, yeah there used that, to be a lot of trees there. Yeah, so now you can find it. Yeah, now you're right. But yeah. uh, no, but... Uh, you know, I appreciate you taking the time, coming and kind of explaining some of the changes that's taken place up there, and all for on a positive standpoint. You know, all to to make the company better, and you know, the employees, everybody better, and and just you know, and then in the end, the customers win. You know, because of you know the it, it, being you being able to be their one-stop shop. Absolutely. Um, you know, that goes back to we're trying to to enhance our customer base, and we're trying to enhance our customer loyalty, and the only way you can do that is by putting out a 100% quality product. Uh, we want a product that puts our customers in victory lane. Um, and that mentality has not changed one bit. Uh, we, are, we are race drivers at heart. You know, we're, we're a race team, and, and that's the yep. way we're always going to be. Yeah, you're absolutely right, RJ. But uh, we're going to take a break with RJ. When we come back, one of your longtime employees is going to come in, sit down, we're going to talk a little racing, talk about some of the customers, some of the things that he's seen in the past and hopes to see in the future. Absolutely. I bet right. you he's pretty excited. Oh well, yeah. We'll take a break and be right back. At Southern Maine Chrysler Dodge Jeep, we truly do make it easy for our customers every step of the way. At Southern Maine Motors, they made it really easy to find a car I like because of their wide selection and they also helped me finance. 
at some of the motors, they, they make me feel like family. They made it so easy. Looking for a new 2013 Chrysler Dodge or Jeep? You've got to check them out. You can't afford not to. We are under construction, but we are open. So come on in, we'll make it easy. The summer clearance event is going on now. You don't have to wait till the camping season is over to get your best price of the year on all in-stock travel trailers, fifth wheels, pop-ups, motorhomes, and toy haulers. We have over $1 million in snowmobile trailers incoming and really need the room, so all RVs need to go. Save up to $20,000 on fifth wheels, toy haulers, and Winnebago Class C motorhomes. Save up to $10,000 off travel trailers. Get your best deal while the best part of camping season is still here. Scott's Recreation, Route 4 Turner and Route 202 Manchester, Maine. For a trusted name in residential and commercial site work in the southern Maine area, call Peter Pettit Excavating. We can handle everything from the complete house lot to those nasty water and sewer line repairs. Septic systems are another area that we specialize in. During the snow season, Pettit Excavating has the equipment to handle any size job. And when the race season arrives, be sure to follow the number 7 Hewitt's Family Restaurant Chevrolet on the past Super Late Model Tour. Call 207-282-9305 to get the job done right. That's Peter Pettit Excavating. Mainly Motorsports TV, brought to you by Scotch Recreation. Whether you're thinking about your first camper or looking to upgrade your current one, Scotch Recreation can help you. Get both our Route 202 Manchester and our Route 4 Turner locations and online at scotchrecreation.com. LKQ Core. Any part, any repair, anywhere. Located on Route 202 in Gorham. When you're in need of awards or personalized gifts, call Award Champs, where they'll help you reward your champion. We're back here on Mainly Motorsports, and... Uh, Anybody that's ever been into Bartlett McMaster or been to uh, Oxford over the years is going to recognize this guy, Spencer Robbins. And, uh, you know, first off, before we talk about Bartlett McMaster, tell everybody the story about you and your brother both racing and you realized to go to the next level, somebody had to quit, right? Exactly, yeah. We, uh, we've raced uh, since 92, I think, is when we started racing. For three years, I raced a four cylinder Volkswagen. And he raced the six cylinder charger cars. And when Tom Curley came down to Oxford to, to change the six cylinders over to the V8s, was when we first competed against each other. And uh, I, I was usually wreckers or checkers, and uh, Scott was the one that did, did a lot of the winning at the time. But uh, after three or four years, we decided we wanted to race pro stocks. We wanted to race against Jeff Taylor and Mike Rowe and you know, all these big names. And so to do that, we couldn't do it with two cars. And, uh, I was more of the nuts and bolts kind of guy, and my brother was a little prettier and got the sponsorship, and he could drive a little easier than I could, so we decided to go into a pro stock, and he, he drove, and I crew chief for him. Yeah, and I mean, obviously, you won the 250 at one point, so it was the right decision, huh? It was, yeah, it was a lot of fun, a lot, yeah. of, a lot of winning over the years, and the 250 was certainly pretty special. Now, how long have you been at Butler McMaster? Uh, 16 years now. Yeah, I come out of trade school. Dave was looking for a guy. He knew I was racing. We had our engines done at Butler McMaster. And uh, he said, you ever think about working here? He just pulled me aside one time and I said, yeah, I did. It's my dream to work at an engine shop like that. Yeah. So I came right out of trade school and uh, he, he took me under his wing. And I worked in all the areas in the shop and then now just kind of working in the office overseeing stuff. So you've seen a lot up there. Yeah. I mean, uh, was the GM crate program already in place when you were there? Or? It, had, it was just getting started. I think Johnny Clark was running one of the pro trucks at the time. Yeah. Uh, Andy Santier had a hand in helping Dave with it, I think. He might have tested some trucks. Yeah. Uh, so you remember the old pro truck? Yeah. Uh, that's where it all started. So back then we didn't know how big it was going to get. Uh, and then Tom Curley coming on board. Uh, I've got notes all the way back to 2000 with, with these engines. and. Uh, Got them all on the computer. I think we've got over 500 engines throughout the years of just the ZZ4s. And then, uh, you know, 08 or 09 was when the Ford came in. So it, it took a lot of, of work to make sure that Ford was competitive with the, not too competitive. Yeah. Yeah. So that had to play a special part in, you know, as much as the wins with your brother, knowing that, you know, when you pick up a magazine and they talk about the Ford, uh, crate motor program, or you hear it at a, you know, from a track down south, or something, that you guys really played a huge role in the development of that. Yes, yep. So many things that uh, you pick up a magazine and buy a crate engine now, the crate engine you see in there, it, it's different than what we have because of 
what Dave McMaster has done over the years with updates. Yeah. You know, different things that he has gone to the engineers with. And, uh, you know, we don't want to have a great engine out there and have it break. And then people lose faith in that growth. Yeah. So over the years, there's been a lot of updates, a lot of improvements. How smart was Dave McMaster? He was not, he's not only smart with engines, but everything. What, what amazed me was anyone could walk through that door and he could pick up a conversation about anything. Politics, uh, military, no, no matter what it was, he, he knew, he knows so much about every, every subject. Yeah, no, and then, you know, we've had a lot of conversations, you know, back when we raced and, you know, we, um, you know, you guys did our stuff and, you know, and, and he used to tell me, and it was funny, is, you know, he had his guys that he, you know, he knew if his motor stood up to that it was good stuff and, and we used to always have those conversations, you know, and, and I remember calling him up and uh, we were going to South Boston and I said, Dave, I said, I'm going to South Boston, I said, the motor got one more race in it? And he says, geez, he's really out of fresh. And I said, Dave, it's one more race. And he goes, well, I mean, it's, you'll probably be all right. And, you know, I mean, let's hope. And I said, okay. Two days later, he calls me up. He goes, Steve, yeah, Dave McMaster here. Oh, how you doing? He goes, you didn't tell me who you was taking to South Boston to drive the car. I said, well, he says, I don't think it's going to make it. I said, well, we'll see. He goes, I'm just telling you, you know, when we were going with Kyle Bush, and he said, there ain't nobody any harder on the equipment than him. And, we didn't make it. We lasted about half the race. So, you know, I mean, not you guys. Well, it's just we knew what we were getting into. And, uh, but no, and I always, everybody I always talked to about Dave and, and that had to deal with the whole team up there, you know, nothing but high praise. Never walked away thinking they were this, or they got shafted, they were this. They were always treated with respect and treated fair. And it didn't matter. And this is another thing about him. It didn't matter who you were when you walked through the door. If you were the top dog like Johnny Clark or Cassius Clark in the area, or if you were the guy that was, you know, just using them to build the, you know, Wildcat motor, you know, he treated you as just like he treated those guys. Yeah, and what I saw with him was uh, the racer was that way. He always treated the racer that way. But if a guy brought in his farm tractor, it was the same thing. Yeah. That man needs his piece of equipment to get back working. So that John Deere head is just as important as the race car heads. You know, he knew everything about all that, the diesel equipment, the marine industry. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what do you think of, you know, all the changes? I mean, you were already seeing the positives of it, and, you know, obviously, it, you know, things had to change a little bit with new ownership, but, you know, it, it's moving forward. Yes, yep. It, uh, it's tough. I mean, everybody recognized Dave, and, you know, now that he's retired, it, it's a little bump to get over, but uh, a lot of opportunities with the new company, a lot of... A lot of uh, New vendors and teamwork, you know, the so many people down in New Jersey that we can talk to, and you know, and they, they rely on us too on stuff we do up here. No, and that's cool. Now, up here, you're still heavily involved in the short track racing scene, and uh, you know, the crate motors have changed things a little bit. Not a lot of guys still on the built motor program. We were talking earlier today with, with one of your guys, and that's Johnny Clark, and I mean, he's he's been with you guys since he started racing, you know, and and that says a lot when you have a customer that has probably been offered other deals or other, you know, hey, why don't you come run a one of mine? And, but they, they trust your product, they trust the relationship they're establishing, and they stay. Right, yep. You know, him being a front runner is, uh, I mean, it's a great team, and over the years won a lot of championships, and, and I'm sure a lot of people want him to, to go to them and, you know, have their engine builder on his, on his car. And, uh, it, it's been a great relationship, and, uh, you know, he is one of the few, I believe, that doesn't have a crate. And uh, it's tough. It, uh, some places you go, you need a crate engine. Some yeah. places you go, you need a built engine. So uh, it's just depends, uh, depends what combination you're going to go with. Yeah, no, you're right. And, uh, you know, over on the act side of things, you know, Wayne Hallowell, you know, stepped up with the Ford when they first come on board, really. And, uh, you know, he's won, what, the, the, the Blue Oval Challenge all four years. And, you know, him and Bruce, they're pretty... You know, I don't say they're dominant, but you know they don't have mechanical failures, and they every year now they're one of your top one, two, or three guys. You know. Right. Yep. The uh, one thing a lot of people don't realize with us with the crate engine or any engine is they're welcome to come to the dyno. And I tell you, when uh, when Bruce Bernhardt comes for a dyno session, he's there for a long time. Yeah. He tests a lot of things. To him, uh, it's like going to the racetrack and testing. I mean, you know, when you go to the racetrack, I want to test this spring and this shock and, yeah. you know, try some camber and caster and everything. When he comes to the dyno, he's got headers and fuel and carburetors. And so it, it's just really neat to see people that are working that hard on their stuff. 
and uh, everybody's welcome to come to the dyno and test stuff when, they, when their engine's dynoed. Which brings me to the next, the dyno promotion. Yes. I mean, every year, especially with the crate motors, everybody sits and waits. And then about February, March, even April, guys are running in saying, hey, I'm ready, I need my motor, can I, two weeks, and, you know, got motors stacked and stealing. So, you know, somebody came up with a pretty good idea to try to help that process, but also help the racer. Yes. You know, talk about that. We, uh, I believe it's towards the end of the month, it's through the end of the month, uh, it's, it's free dyno session, so about $300 savings. And for us, it, it works good because we don't have a lot going on this time of year. It's not just the race engines, but uh, you know your bolts are being stored, your, your classic cars are being stored away, so nobody's building stuff. So we're trying to get the, the early birds in where the refreshes, and uh, that way we can stay busy from you know September to December is pretty slow for us. So it gives us something to work on, saves the racers some money, they'll have a little extra money to, to put in their chassis or tire money next year. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. And how about you? Have you seen some uh, some influx of that? Or? Yes. Yeah. Uh, the uh, we've had had handful of engines that are already there, and, and another three or four that are out there. We know we're going to go get. So, and that's still it's only in its first week. So. Yeah. So you know, if you are curious and uh, inquire, you obviously got a Facebook page, the website, and uh, you know, or call them up and, and find out about that. The phone still works. The phone still works. It isn't all about the internet still yet, but. Uh, but no, and that that is a pretty good little offer, you know, to you know, because usually, you know, their racers this time of year are out looking for sponsor money, and right. you're giving them sponsor money. You're you're sponsoring, you know, I think it's yeah. capped at twenty or something, and uh, but you're giving twenty teams three hundred bucks if they want it, you know. Yeah, works out good. So no, and it's it's been really good, and looking forward to the future, and uh, you know, has your job made been made easier? Uh, yes, yeah, I mean, uh, it it certainly uh, it's. My job has stayed the same as far as what I do there, but uh, just having other people to lean on, it, it helps out quite a bit. Yeah, no, and, and it, I mean, I'm excited for, you know, the whole team out there, you know, the Mountain Group and, you know, obviously Butler McMaster and everything they bring. You guys had a nice display, and I think the plans are to come back to the Northeast Motorsports Expo this year. And, you know, a nice display with big motors. I mean, those oh, were yeah. big motors, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, and uh, so if you want to inquire about the, the, the crate motor, you know, free dyno session with your freshen up. I mean, obviously get right on it and, and check it out and, you know, check out their website and then come and meet them. And I know you were at Augusta. Yeah. RJ was at Augusta. Paul was at Augusta. So I don't know who's coming this year, you know, probably a little selection again. But it's a chance to come up and meet them face-to-face -face and ask the questions, you know, because there's nothing like that face-to-face -face thing either, you know. That's right. Yep. All right. Well, I want to thank you, Spencer, for taking the time. Come down in Mainly Motorsports, talk about little past of Butler McMaster and the future and and obviously RJ you know brought a lot of knowledge and a lot of insight of some of the changes to expect when you call or see them or at the racetrack and a lot of big things happen up there at Butler McMaster so we're going to take a break and we'll be right back on Mainly Motorsports. Award Champs LLC is Southern Maine's premier award supplier and official award supplier for many of the area's top organization and events. If you're in need of an award for a sponsor, employee recognition, fundraising event, or an entire sports organization, call Todd Mead at Award Champ. They provide the best for less with competitive pricing like the big online firms, but give you the personalized service you can only get from a local supplier. When you're in need of awards or personalized gifts, call Award Champs, where they'll help you reward your champion. Shop online at otmotorsales.com. Hello racers, I'm Amanda with Butler McMaster. Since our beginning, we have been an integral member of the New England racing industry. We played a key role in the development of the Crate Engine program. We are an official Ford Racing Parts dealer offering drop shipping on crate engines as well as complete competition ready packages. We are a one-stop machining and parts source. Check out our website for more information. This fall we are offering a special on your postseason engine refreshes. If you are one of the first 20 customers turning their engine in between October 21st and November 18th, we will give you your dyno test for free. That's a $300 saving. Well as we walked around, saw people at Thompson, people stopped and talked to us. Um, obviously I was asked a lot of questions on my thoughts of the Granite State Pro Stock Series 
Jack Bateman versus the New England Super Late Model Series, Mike Parks. And uh, for anybody who isn't aware, uh, the MRS, the Modified Racing Series, started the Granite State Pro Stock Series three years ago. Uh, Mike Parks was involved with it, John Hoyt, uh, Jack Bateman. Uh, they've grown over the last two years, really got into some new tracks this year, a couple of races at Thompson, had good car counts, put on some good races, started bringing that level of quality of driver up, and then uh, differences of opinion, I'm not going to get into it. You can go read it online, go to Facebook, uh, Sean, Sean Cressane out of uh, Connecticut, he has both sides of the story. Neither one of us happy, has to do with he said, she said, probably somewhere in the middle the truth is. You know, it's like any split decision, so to speak. The truth is somewhere in the middle. And uh, my opinion, and this isn't nothing to take a side or another, it's going to be hard for them both to succeed. You know, uh, first and foremost, you have the Pro All-Star Series out there who has what we consider some of the top facilities in New England, especially northern New England, northern New England wrapped up. So now you've got to search for other tracks. Some of the tracks are only limited to the ones that are going to uh, can take the pro stocks or the super late models or even willing to pay the purses of the super late models. So now you have these two series based out of New Hampshire that are going to be looking for tracks. And, you know, obviously the Granite State has a little more clout with a couple of the tracks because of the MRS series. So does that give them more credibility? I don't know. But then you have Mike Parks, who's been, in my opinion, the front guy. You know, the guy in the front that you would talk to, you would call, you would ask questions to uh, when it comes to the Granite State Pro Stock Series over the last couple of years. So, obviously, he's pulling on his side of things and bringing some people his way. So, it's going to be pretty interested. And, uh, you know, one of those things, I know I've already got my paperwork for the Granite State Pro Stock Series to come to the Northeast Motorsports Expo. And, and I will be contacting Mike this week and see... Uh, because I think the paperwork came from him, so do we just change it to the New England Super Late Model Series and you know go that way, or what do we do? You know, and uh, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be you know we always talk about the silly season and uh, you know the teams and the uh, you know the sponsors and some of these, but uh, you know we got a new series. You know I don't want to keep popping up. I call it dividing. You know you had a series that was becoming strong. Uh, were they capable of standing on their own two feet? I don't know. I mean they put on some good races. I saw a few of their races this year. Uh, pretty damn good, but I don't think they were strong enough to split and go their separate ways and have them both stand on their own two feet. So it will be interesting to see what happens over there, and uh, you know we'll try to get a word with with both Mike Parks and, and Jack Bateman, and so we can bring some insight to it. And you know I don't want to speak out of turn and and you know and speak without having knowledge of of the whole situation. But uh, with that being said. The Northeast Motorsports Expo is just around the corner. And I mean, I know I hate to say it because I'm really not ready, but we're working uh, diligently, uh, bringing in some new uh, vendors, some new exhibitors. If you haven't got your paperwork in, be expecting a phone call or an email from me if you were involved last year because I've got some new people that have stepping up. So, you know, I don't want somebody that has supported me over the last four or five years decide December 15th that, oh yeah, that's right, I gotta do that. And they call me and I'm like, dude, we're full. You know, I don't want that. I wanna take care of the people, obviously, that have supported us over the years and uh, looking forward to that. And, you know, so if you're interested, you can contact me. If you don't have the paperwork, I'll send it to you. We can email it to you. You can get your, uh, your vendor forms right offline at northeastmotorsportsexpo.net. Uh, we're updating it almost daily of who's coming. Looking, uh, looking to have a big announcement for bringing in a, uh, maybe not a top level star, but in a couple of years he'll be on the top level, and uh, just like Joey Logano was a couple of years ago. So talked with John Holland this past weekend down at Thompson, and this is something we started putting together over at uh, New Hampshire Motor Speedway back in September, and it's getting closer and closer and closer, and it's tough with Nationwide and Cup all still racing to be able to put that stuff together, but me and John are working pretty hard to try to put something together and, and bring a star up there that kind of puts the average racer, maybe not the guy that spends his Saturday nights at Oxford or Beach Ridge at Unity at Wiscasset, Spud, 95, Lee, Star, Canaan, Groveton, you know, but the guy that sits home on Saturdays and watches a nascent ride and hits a few races or goes to a couple pass races during the year. So I want to bring those fans up and introduce them to your product, and then that way maybe they'll say, you know what, I've never been to Wiscasset. I'm going to go check it out. Let's see what it's all about, you know, and that's what it's all about here is, is introduce people to the great, sport of short track racing you know it's the racers need to do their job the tracks need to do their job us as a tv show and uh do try to do our job as promotion and promoting you guys and then uh you know and then sponsors take care of your sponsors you know and we really uh we really appreciate all the sponsors we have here on mainly motorsports and 
you know, people talk to me all day, we, all weekend long down at Thompson, you know, and you'll start seeing some new scrolls roll across the bottom because people want to support us because we're doing our part to try to support them and their series and their tracks. So take a break. We come back, and I want to talk about a couple of special people, one I've known for a few years and one I just really got to meet over the last couple of years. But uh, they got something big coming up in their life, and, and I'll tell you, I've been a part of it, and it's, it don't get any bigger for a racer around the state of Maine. I'm going to take a break and be right back here on Mainly Motorsports. Negotiations were underway between Mike Parks and Jack Bateman as this week's Mainly Motorsports show was being filmed. What follows is a press release we received just before the show aired. Ownership of Granite State Pro Stock Series transferred to Mike Parks. Mike Parks and Jack Bateman are pleased to announce that the group accustomed to running under the Granite State Pro Stock Series banner will continue to do so in 2014 and beyond. Following a meeting of the two parties, Bateman has agreed to transfer ownership of the sophomore series to Parks, who has served as the series president since its inception. I'm grateful to Jack for working with me to resolve this issue. He has been a great support to us over the last two years, and I'm glad that our agreement is in the best interest for the 69 teams that participated in the Granite State Pro Stock Series this year. We will be fortunate enough to have him around to advise on technical policies and procedures moving forward, Parks said. Bateman, who has served as the series vice president and owner since 2012, has offered his consulting services and will be counted on for input on technical matters. In addition, Bateman's company, Jack's Competition Engines, will serve as the tire vendor for the series. The Granite State Pro Stock Series will move forward with the crowning of Mike O'Sullivan as the series' second champion on Friday, December 27, 2013 at the Yard Restaurant in Manchester, New Hampshire. Today's vehicles are equipped with complex safety features such as anti-lock brakes, seat belt restraints, and airbag systems. Even collision avoidance systems. Not available in all models. Hi, I'm Sean Moody from Moody's Collision Centers. We don't wish bad luck on anyone, but even with today's technology, we need to keep our eyes on the road and our hands on the wheel. Moody's Collision Centers, now with seven convenient locations, Gorham, Scarborough, Biddeford, Portland, Sanford, Lewiston, and now South Portland. Visit us at moodyscollision.com. Mainly Motorsports TV, brought to you by... Bentley Saloon, Route 1 in Arundel. Stop by and see why me and my friends say, who has more fun than us? We do. Clark's Car Crushing, providing guaranteed honest weights with top dollar being paid. Well, any individual that's involved with any sport or anything, whether it's motion pictures, I guess, I guess they don't have it, I don't know. But uh, when you hear Hall of Fame, you know you gave everything you had, you left it, whether it was on the track or on the field, and, uh, and people recognized your contribution to the sport. And uh, this past weekend, the next class for the Maine State Hall of Fame, the Maine Vintage Organization's Hall of Fame, was announced. And uh, a couple of names that jumped to the front for me and, uh, is Bob Alexander, number one. Um, been involved in the sport many years, um, up at Spud Speedway, traveled around the state, racing back in the 60s and 70s, and, you know, made his mark. Obviously not a recognizable name to the racer down here in, in the southern part of Maine and New Hampshire, but he made his mark in the state. And uh, for that group and the process that they go through to narrow it down and find five worthy candidates each year, and there's hundreds of candidates. Every year, two or three hundred people you know, get nominated. A lot of times the same ones that have already been nominated. And uh, so to be involved in that and, and then to get the call, and I know last week, and a lot of people saw it on Facebook, uh, Bob's daughter, uh, daughter-in-law, Jan Alexander, Wyatt's mom, posted that they got the call and, you know, just so excited for Bob Alexander. And, and trust me, I have been to these events um, to watch, been a part of it with, you know, uh, a guy that raced for me a few years back. And it's, it's amazing to sit in that room and look around and see the people that are there and uh, their contribu contribution to the sport. You know, it's hard to fathom for the younger kids but I'm going to tell you, a young man that's going to sit there this year, and he's finally going to get and understand what his grandfather's done, and that's Wyatt Alexander. Because since Wyatt started racing kid carts up at Thunder and Valley and now on the Nelcar Legend and prepares to take a step into the Pro Late model, hopefully for 2014, uh, doing some practicing, 
His grandfather Bob's been right beside him, his dad, Brett. So, you know, I don't know if there's a better feeling, a better feeling to be able to do something like that with your son and your father and the three of you and to be able to do that and then Brett sit there and now Wyatt sit there and watch their grandfather be inducted into the main Vintage Hall of Fame is going to be a very special moment for the Alexander family. Which brings me to the next guy. And honestly, this one is, there shouldn't be no nomination. Just, yep. And that's Mr. Mike Rowe. And uh, the accolades keep pouring in for him. And it's hard to think of a guy going into a Hall of Fame who's still racing, still getting it done, coming off his 15th career championship uh, on touring series, Oxford's Beechridge. But Mike Rowe, they said he finally became of age and he's eligible. Why wait? And I agree 100%. You know, you can't put off the inevitable. You know, death, taxes, and Mike Rowe in the Hall of Fame are three things that were inevitable. And congratulations to Mike, and I will guarantee you that me and my organization and people that we've been, uh, been there part of Mike's racing career for a few years and got to know Mike, we will be sitting in the chair, and, you know, we will be very proud to say we played a part, even though just a small part of that man's career. And uh, just, you know, if... If you're not doing anything that weekend, and I know Bruce Elder and all them, they're going to go, oh, no, oh, no. It's something you really, you know, grab your girlfriend, your wife, your family, say, you know what, we need to go and be a part of this because there's certain things that, that uh, you know, only come along once in a lifetime. And you know, I'm not putting Mike Rowe on a pedestal or, a ball, or any of them, but to, to experience what you, uh, what you experience up there and see the you know, the, the people that are there, and, and I'll give you a quick story about it. I remember the first time I ever went, never been, uh, went up there with Mike Rowe. He was, it was before I even owned this show. Mike was nominated for Driver of the Year, which they do each year. They get three drivers, they give a nomination, and each driver that's nominated goes up and gives a little speech. Then the winner comes up and gives a longer speech. So Mike was nominated, and uh, it was one of those years where it just didn't matter what you did, you weren't beating Mike. He had all the stats and won everything that mattered. So when Mike got up there and decided that he... Um, he wanted to, you know, he didn't want to speak. He'd spoke enough. He wanted to hear from somebody that was played a part in allowing him to do what he did, and that was me. So, you know, they invited me up front, and I got to stand at the podium and look out and look at racetrack promoters, racetrack drivers, guys that when I was five years old were my villains or my favorite drivers. And for them to have, me to have their intention, I'll tell you, there's this, this three moments, really, that stand out in my mind when it comes to, uh, racing things that I, I uh, shouldn't be involved with and that was the hell of a good last year standing up there with all those guys because I didn't deserve to even be up on that stage presenting those guys for all they done and then to be standing at that podium looking out at all those people um, it just it was an amazing thing so I'm really looking forward to that uh, we'll hear from uh, all the ones that are accepting awards you can go to the main vintage website see who all the nominees are and uh, but really excited to, to be a part of it, and congratulations to everyone, especially Mike Rowe, who I consider a friend, and uh, you know had a lot of fun with him, and hope to still have some fun with him as uh, as he still gets it done at the young age of 63. So we'll take a break. We'll have some more here on Mainly Motorsports. <laughs> For a trusted name in residential and commercial site work in the Southern Main area, call Peter Pettit Excavating. We can handle everything from the complete house lot to those nasty water and sewer line repairs. Septic systems are another area that we specialize in. During the snow season, Pettit Excavating has the equipment to handle any size job. And when the race season arrives, be sure to follow the number 7 Hewitt's Family Restaurant Chevrolet on the past Super Late Model Tour. Call 207-282-9305 to get the job done right. That's Peter Pettit Excavating. Hello racers, I'm Amanda with Butler McMaster. Since our beginning, we have been an integral member of the New England racing industry. We played a key role in the development of the Crate Engine program. 
we are an official Ford Racing Parts dealer offering drop shipping on crate engines as well as complete competition ready packages. We are a one stop machining and parts source. Check out our website for more information. This fall we are offering a special on your post season engine refreshes. If you are one of the first 20 customers starting their engine in between October 21st and November 18th, we will give you your dyno test for free. That's a $300 saving. Well, as we brings us to the last segment here on Mainly Motorsports, uh, you know, just it was a great week. Without really turning any laps anywhere, a great week. Uh, some of the things that you heard took place during, you know, what I call silly season, but having the guy likes of Mike Rowe inducted into the main Vintage Hall of Fame, that ain't silly season, that's end of story. But, uh, you know, there's a lot still happening, banquet season, uh, get your stuff in for the Northeast Motorsports Expo. Um, if you got any questions, contact me. You know, don't, don't assume. I hate assumers. Obviously, I'm an assumer, but uh, we had a good time, like I said, at the Nelka Banquet. And, uh, you know, some of those guys, as well as some guys from every track in the state, uh, represented it in the mainlies. And uh, get out and support your guys. And, you know, I'm speaking for myself, but I'll speak for Greg, who always tells you, just spend a little time, go to their websites, look at their finishes, find out what they did, uh, wins. You know, kind of don't just vote for who you know. Just try to put a little effort into it. And... Uh, Really, really a good time. And uh, there's still a few other things this past weekend that still some things going on. Uh, over at uh, Groveton, the Frostbite 400, and uh, just a lot of stuff happening. And, you know, I don't know. That it, if they ran it Saturday, it wasn't too bad. If they ran it Sunday, which I think it was Saturday, and uh, the winner was Jason Kennison, uh, Joel Hodgson second, John Savage third, Jamie Heath fourth, and Jamie Longley fifth. So I don't know about the rest of you if you picked up on it, but... If your name don't begin with a J, I don't even know why you'd even go race it because everybody that began with a J were all the top five finishes. So uh, still looking to hear from some of you champions and during the off season, I've already contacted some. We're going to get them in. We can come to the shop. Want to give you your chance to, you know, be heard and, you know, talk about your 2013, what your 2014 is and, you know, kind of kind of help you and, and promote you, promote your team, what you're doing. And, you know, so if anybody's interested, don't be afraid to contact us and, you know, well, the people want to hear it. You know, the race fans, people that race at Wiscasset want to hear what's going on at the guys at Oxford and vice versa. Still haven't heard on Oxford and if they're going to be Friday and Saturday, or Friday or Saturday. And, you know, also this time of year, you never know on, you know, with social media and the website and everything, when the schedules are going to start popping up. You know, it used to be back when I was a kid, that's why you went to the Northeast Motorsports Expo. Get the schedules. That was the big deal. Get the schedules. Well, now everybody posts their schedules online, which is fine. And, you know, it helps because it's also easier to, to prepare your cars for the shows, which this year's show is January 11th and 12th, and, and go to your sponsors and try to prepare yourself for, you know, that 2014 that every driver and car member and crew chief and car owner all dream of. So, uh, you know, get yourself ready, the shows, the mainlies, everything's going on, and contact us with any news you have. We'd like to talk about it. So, Steve, for no co-host, Greg, but he'll be back sometime. I'm going to... And this week's episode of Mainly Motorsports, and we'll see you next time right here on Mainly Motorsports. Malcolm was a 1960s C-Class driver before eventually turning his efforts pit side for other teams. Notably, he helped propel Bob Randall to championship titles and did the same with Dick McCabe's NASCAR Bush North Series efforts. He served as the head tech man at Beach Ridge during the mid-1970s and returned to the track's highest role as director of competition alongside Bob Libby beginning in 1997. Our thoughts and prayers go out to the family and friends of Malcolm Grafham. He will truly be missed. Okay.
You could probably just do lower. Hello racers, I'm Amanda with Butler McMaster. Since our beginning, we've been an integral member of the New England racing industry. We played a key role. Yeah. Can I start from here and then start from that line? <laughs> 